Hi, this is Jeff Peterson. Today, during our Ask the Racer, I will be interviewing the owner of and racer for you's basic motorsports performance parts. I'll be asking him about an important stage during a drag race, which is staging the car. So, John, why is the topic of staging the car so important for new drag racers? Well, Jeff, uh, besides the obvious, you have to stage the car in order to get the race started. But again, it's really a more, it's a lot more critical than you would think it would be. Right. Just for the simple reason is because there's a certain amount of etiquette involved in staging the vehicle. Where um, you're going to do your job and the other uh, competitor does his or her job. Right. So staging is really, in a lot of cases, overlooked, but really critical portion of, uh, of the race. So, John, why is the topic of staging the car so important for new drag racers? Well, you know, for the simple reason is, it's all about repetition. Mm -hmm. It's understanding the process and keeping the process going the same way, time after time after time. Right. So, if you do something one time, it actually will throw you off if you try to change the process that you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And if, at times it actually, I get caught at doing it myself. If I change one step within the many steps of staging, it throws me off at times where I cut a lousy light, I get distracted. So again, really critical, a lot of people overlook it, but there is that specific steps and it's all about practice and practice. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Now here's a little about the racer himself. What is your background with regard to staging your car? Well, um, actually I started racing back in 1984, so don't want to date myself unfortunately, but I've been in the, you know, racing for 37 <laughs> years. And I don't even want to fathom how many actual races or quarter or eighth miles I've been involved in. I, I got to believe it's somewhere over about 1,800 to 2,000 at least minimum. So again, yeah, just a few. But again, it goes back to doing the same and practicing, right? Repetition, yeah. But still, I still do bonehead things at times that I just, when I get back to the pits, besides my crew chief is looking at me like, what the hell? My wife and daughter are looking at me like, what are you doing out there? Are you new at this? <laughs> so unfortunately, it's just one of those things that happen. But it's, uh, again, it's always about the process. Everything exactly. from when I bring the car into the bleach, uh, into the water box area, to where I, I set my uh, line lock, to how long I do a burnout for, mm -hmm. literally how far I go, Right. The backup procedure, I mean, everything is orchestrated and is the same time after time. So for all the new racers out there, don't expect to be perfect the first time. It'll never happen unless you get lucky. You just have you're to follow the steps. That's all you're going to have to do. You're going to make mistakes, which is normal. Right. But again, it's all about doing it and doing it and doing it. So most racers, again, start out with, you know, your mother's grocery getter, basically and then they go up from there. So if you have a chance to go to the local track, it's a perfect scenario to use your uh, uh, a regular, uh, just a regular car and get that part down. Don't worry about breaking any records, the ET records or speed records. Just get that process down and going in your mind how to do it. Then when you're done, come back, sit down, and go through it in your mind again and again and again. Now, the line of tracks, that would be the test and tune, correct? That would be the test and tune, definitely. And, you know, and, and there's there's a lot of tracks that have a, a Wednesday test and tune. They have a Friday night test and tune. Mm -hmm. Normally, when you're at a, a, you know, at a division race or at a points race or something like that, not a lot of that opportunity involved. So go to your local track on a, either a, a Wednesday or a Friday. Some actually have uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday where you can test and tune. And just practice. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, then. Next question. Um, now, for someone who's getting started, 
What would you say to a new drag racer who is nervous about his first time staging a car? What would you say to put their mind at ease? Well, first of all, you're not human if you're not nervous. Anytime you do something for the first one, two, three times, there's a fear factor involved. Mm -hmm. was for me, it is for most of us. There are those folks that are just born with that talent. Right. Where they just, it's just like, you know, ducks to water. Mm -hmm. Other people, like myself, unfortunately, have to go through the process. It's all about the crawl, walk, and run program. Right. Nothing more, nothing less. So, again, don't worry about what your buddy's going to say. Don't worry about what somebody's thinking in the stands. Don't worry about nothing. You're not out there to impress anybody. You're just out there to learn and start honing your skill. You're, you're figuring out the task at hand. Right, right. You're not going for any championship. You're not going for the quickest run on the track. You're not even worrying about a launch time or a reaction time. Mm -hmm. Get the process on how to stage the car. You know, you turn the first set of bulbs on, pre-stage, you put the other set of bulbs on, which is a stage, and then depending on what you're running, most, you know, most sportsman classes, or, um, you know, that type of class is a full tree, which is five tenths between each light, and then green, go. Go, right. I'm thinking that there might be some big mistakes that new drag racers uh, tend to make when staging their car. What's the biggest mistake that you have made uh, with staging your car and how can new drag racers learn from your experience? Well, first of all, unfortunately, we don't have a week to go through all of the mistakes that I've made <laughs> in the 37 years because nobody be watching this telecast any longer or excitement at all. But I'll try to condense it. You know, again, when you first go up there a couple, first couple, three, four times, you have to think about the process, right? Mm -hmm. But when you go up there, remember, go up there with a purpose. I mean, you've already run it through your mind already. You've talked to probably other drag racers. Mm -hmm. You probably have gone onto the internet and looked at different articles about staging, racing, etc. So you got a kind of a, a a basic thought process of how this is supposed to look. Right. So when you go up there, just get up there, you know, be courteous to the other driver. And for those who don't know, courteous staging is when, like example, you may turn your top bulb on, your competitor will turn his pre-stage on, then either one of you, either one of you can go in and turn on the on the next stage light. But the point of it is is that don't go in and turn both bulbs on at the same time, because again, you're not you're not impressing anybody. Just do the task at hand. Be courteous to your component, uh, your uh, competitor, right? Because someday you'll expect him to be or she to give you that same in return, right? Exactly. The idea is go up there, turn the first bulb on, wait till he or she puts the next bulb on, bump into so you're already staged, and then they'll bump in and lights will come down and we'll be on our way having fun. That's one example. Second thing is, don't roll through the lights if you possibly can. So it's important to use your foot brake and your gas, feather them. And the idea behind it is, as you turn the first bulb on, feather, gas, and brake. Just keep nudging it a little bit, even if you jerk, no worry. Again, nobody is taping you, and you ain't going to be on Facebook or the news tonight, right? Just go up there, Bump in slowly, even if you're hitting the brake and you know, and the car's just jerking a little bit, that's all right, to where you turn the second ball on. A lot of new drivers, listen, it happens to me too at times. I get all hyped up, I'll go through and turn the first bulb on, and then what I'll do is I'll actually roll through the first bulb and turn the top bulb off and leave the bottom bulb on. That in the world is called deep staging. Mm -hmm. The idea is you're supposed to be cutting down the length from the start to the finish line. Now, the problem is your reaction time will be hurt by it. Yeah, we cut down. But you set, theoretically, you're closer to your end point. Right. You don't get the rollout. But the problem with that is, is that it goes back to the courtesy staging. Depending on what class you're in, what type of race you're running, sometimes they do not let you drop the top ball off. Other ones got no problem. But if you end up doing that, remember. 
if you roll through that last beam and all your lights go off, you're already, you're disqualified. So initially, the simplest thing to do, turn the top bulb on, inch in a little bit, turn the bottom bulb on, and just race your race. There you go. All right, now let's talk about some uh, fears, obstacles, and red flags with staging the car. What would you say to a new drag racer who is afraid of looking stupid while staging his car? Never. Never. Don't even worry, don't even worry about it. Right. I mean, if somebody comes up to you and says, you're stupid, you look dumb, figure out where you're going to kick his ass at. <laughs> or, you know, because yeah, yeah. that's ridiculous. Because yeah. everybody was in the same place. Yeah. And if a person comes up to you and says, hey, listen, man, I watched you and you really, oh, man, you look stupid. Then you just got to ask the question, when was the last time you did this? And if they go never, just walk on away, man. No point in even talking with them, man. So again, don't worry what anybody else says. Do not, again, don't worry. It is not a big thing. That's how you're gonna learn. Practice, practice, practice. And then when you're done with that, practice some more. All right then. How new drag racers can increase their efficiency with staging their car? What's your number one tip for being more efficient with staging the car and getting better results with less effort? Practice. I mean, there there's, you go. I mean, it's it's as simple as that. I mean, yeah. you've got to go out there and you understand the task at hand. Mm -hmm. You keep becoming efficient at that task. And I'll tell you, it depends on how far you want to go. If you really want to get into drag racing and not just do it once in a while because it looks like a cool thing to do, that's where the self-reflection is critical. Every time I do a race, when I come back to the pits, I go over my staging process step by step by step. Especially if I felt that there was a problem during the staging process, mm -hmm. right? And then I go through the process of what the run was like and, you know, the shutdown area and things like that. But I continuously try to analyze my um, knowledge and how I did it through the process. Because again, it's all about repetition. Right. Keep it the same. And again, it makes you actually feel better. If you keep doing it the same, you'll always get the same outcome. It's the second nature. Correct. Yep. All right, I got a random question for you. If a new drag racer gave you a $100 gift card to Amazon, what would you buy to help you with your staging of the car results? Whoa, $100 gift certificate? Whoa, damn, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I wonder when, will some, when, I wonder when some people will send me one of those. <laughs> anyway, um, $100 gift certificate about uh, what would I recommend uh, or what would I buy with that? Right, right. Well, first of all, you can't buy experience. Right. So there's no way that you can buy that. The only thing comes that brings experience practice. comes out of the practice. You've right. got to get on the track you got to get your mama's car or your daddy's car. Mm -hmm. Go to the track with their blessing, obviously. Don't be, <laughs> don't be, don't be stealing their car. But go to the, to the track uh, and, and practice. It's, it's a controlled environment. they got safety safari people there so that if anything does happen, you're, can, you know, no street racing, no, no crazy things like that. Plus, they don't have a tree on street racing anyway, yeah. right? So again, go to your local track and run as many times as you can. Like I said, during test and tune, a lot of times I'll see the street guys just hot lapping them. And I talk to a couple of the street guys and they go, yeah, we're on like our 11th run, provided there's no issues with oil downs or anything like that. They just keep going around and round and round in circles. Plus it's great fun. Yeah. yeah. But you get to understand staging and how it looks. Right. Right. Oh, and by the way, with $100, what I would do is I would definitely go to use Basic Motorsports Performance Parts. Amazon sells them too, so I'm not going to say they don't, but look for practice trees. These are little electronic practice trees that will help hone your reaction time based on the lights. It's either if you're running a pro tree or a full tree, Great thing, uh, they're a little more than a hundred bucks, but they're fantastic because once you get past the actual 
understanding the staging process, mm -hmm. then you're going to get into the reaction time. How fast can I react when I see that yellow light go off? Uh, that's fantastic for some practice. Yeah. All right. How about some closing thoughts here? Do you have any final thoughts, next steps, or a final word of caution for our new drag racers? Audience. You know, not that I haven't already beaten to death already in this, inter in this interview, right? Mm -hmm. Practice, the experience, doing it, repetition with it. Also, never hurts. Ask fellow racers. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they have a pro mod. Ask them what they do. They very rarely will they give you a snob answer or. They always want to talk to you about yeah. about what they love to do. So I ask other racers, go on, like I said, on the internet, read about different uh, articles of staging. Mm -hmm. You can pick up a whole bunch of more things than I'm explaining to you because I'm, I'm putting it in a nutshell, if you will. Right. They really get into the technology of, or the technical aspect of staging mm -hmm. uh, more in depth than we would. Right, right. Not that we couldn't, but again, take some time to go into that. Yeah. But again, it's all about just doing it. Yeah, yeah. Where can new drag racers find out more about you and how you can help them with their staging car efforts? Well, Jeff, that's real simple. Everybody, go to usebasicmotorsports.com and there you'll see our website. Go under blogs. Kick on blog and in the blog it'll give you a plethora of different opportunities and options for you. Look at everything from part of the day that we do. We do a new part of the day every Monday and Friday. We have ask a racer or ask the racer questions and so on and so forth every Wednesday. Not to mention we have a lot of how-to videos. We have some videos on building containers for roller rockers, for push rods that we do during the off season to keep them uh, boiled up, clean, and secure, mm -hmm. uh, just, a, just a whole bunch of cool things, but also in the blog, we have put in recently, in fact, you have, which I appreciate very much, did a very good article about staging, but also understanding your comfort zone when you're racing a car, and also just the nuts and bolts of drag racing, right. and what to look for, what not to look for, because there's a lot of different things that go into this. People just think, hey, just, you know, just hit the gas, right. go straight, and you're in business. Anybody can do it. Well, yeah, maybe anybody can do it, but not everybody can do it good. Yeah, yeah. That's the big difference. So go to usebasicmotorsports.com. Listen, while you're there, sorry, I apologize, but I got to throw this out. While you're there, subscribe. Because one thing we do at these basic motorsports, we appreciate you checking out the site and we appreciate all the parts you buy from us. So what we do is we want to give back. So every month we're either going to do a gift certificate or multiple gift certificates, some great swag like this freaking hat, one of many colors that it comes in. Awesome stuff. But other stuff also that, that you can win as long as you subscribe. You just go there, the little box pops up, you just put your uh, uh, email in there, hit join, and bang, you're in there. And then we send you newsletters monthly. Oh, the newsletters are awesome. Did yep. you see that first? I did my first newsletter last yep. month, this month. Yeah. Freaking awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. Hey, listen, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. So listen, if you guys thought that that was excellent, don't expect that all the time, right? But anyway, we're, we're going to try. But a lot of good things, new parts that come out. Uh, discount prices yeah. and cool things about the blogger in there also. So don't miss the opportunity. This is John Hughes Basic and I'm Jeff Peterson. Thank you for joining us at Hughes Basic Motorsports Performance Parts.